Hello and welcome everyone to the third and final game of the DFUC Finals from Luxembourg. So, as before, we have mentioned that this is the Time Leap Mirror Match uh, between Jay on the left and Eve on the right. Both playing the same deck, but playing it a bit differently as we can already see from the start, as we've mentioned before. So We see here the players just starting up, so it's currently 1-1, obviously it being Game 3. Uh, game two, as you may have seen, was uh, not not very long, but still quite interesting, and hopefully uh, we'll see some interesting lines of play here as well. Yeah, so it's definitely going to be. This is definitely when the players get the most tense because you know this is when you this like you know winner takes all. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, like first and second is a bit of a difference between being able to choose any playmat you want from the price pool and any sleeves you want, as well as getting more packs, more keychains, more more of the prizes in general. So one of the things we've noticed in both games, actually, both players weren't... Obviously, you know, you're not keen to give up the grade 3 ride because you don't want to give up first stride. But even on the earlier game, sort of, riding the turn where you first ride to grade 2, or even on the grade 1 turns, both players are really committing to the field a lot earlier, playing a lot more aggressively, giving up some of their GB skills. And I think this is very interesting because Gear Chronicles is a very combo-based aggro deck, and as a result, they both know that, okay, he needs his melon, he needs his History Maker, so they're playing aggressively in order to be able to like either draw shield value from the opponent, thus disrupting their combo, or just getting some free damage early on, which then puts them in the lead. Yeah. So while the players are doing their first uh, couple of turns, we see a crit come through from Jay's side and a draw from, from Eve's, Eve's side. Ooh. So it's pretty nice. So Jay does uh, no pass the vanguard attack, and he takes the rearguard attack. So interesting, but it's understandable. And now he goes for the history maker. And the Ish Lishma once again, so it's going to be a similar uh, turn to play as we saw in game two. Yeah, and this is what I was saying about how even on the grade two turns they're playing a lot more aggressively because they want to, like they want that momentum going into the first stride. Even because even if they give up the first stride, they want their opponent to be less prepared to deal with the first stride attack, as it were. Yeah, and we can see that Jay actually attacked the Melum rear guard, so he basically wants to keep. Um, well, he keeps Eve on two Cannon Blast, but he can't use Sibri's next turn anyway. But he's basically just being a bit more controlling, and Eve already knows that the Caldom is coming through, yeah. so he just shuffled it Seen beforehand. The play before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is just exactly what uh, Jay did in game two as well. But it's also interesting how Time Leap has changed a lot over time. And like before, it was just, you know, the history, Melum, TikTok combos that we were used to seeing, and, you know, the next staging for the win. But while well, now it's become a much more flexible deck, there's a lot more different combos. We see a lot more like a lot more early game focus as well. It's not so much just waiting for the first stride and then you know taking the game from there. It, there is a battle all the way up to that point, and we see cards like Bishma that help that out. So we see here that uh, Eve's guarded the <coughs> Calaboom attack with a gear cap. So now that both of his gear cats are out of the deck, which means that he's not going to have much defensive power going into his turns. Which is yeah. why I think here he's taking a bit slow, getting into assembler's pieces so that when he gets the first ride, he can just aggressively combo out. Yeah. So he obviously Jay's guarded the attack, which turns him off the Sabreeze. Yeah. And here we're just gonna see Eve's take. Yep, so Jay gets the stand. Uh, that was a bit more of an uneventful couple of turns, because neither of them ride it uh, or rode. And um, yeah, and also Jay didn't have the soul to use Lishma again. So that was just, you know, just a couple of vanilla uh, vanguard attacks essentially. So now uh, Eve does have the choice to use Sabri's and he he'll ha will he will have one extra Candle Blast to use for any other uh, units that he wishes to use it on. So we'll see what he decides to do. So, so he is he using the Sabri's as we thought. So we saw that uh, Jay attacked the Melon earlier. This is what I was saying about how you need to deny the combos, you need to make a stat. Even though he's going to Sabri's him, He's not going to be able to do a lot with it. Like, he has one counter blast, he can history maker, sure. But yeah. he needs to have that history maker, he needs to have that melon. He yeah. needs to have all these pieces. Yeah, because, like, you can't do anything with them, you know, if they're in the deck at this stage. But he does have a history maker and the tick away. Oh, that is a. That the is top a, work is very strong here. Yeah, that's definitely going to hurt quite a bit. So it's going to be a 9k attack. Or not. He's still considering. But I think attacking with that row first is the smart play because you know you do have that uh, critical that you want in the soul to get yourself an extra card. Yeah, the issue is that being obviously his combo here isn't well timed because he's going to attack with that trigger grade zero column, which is 9k, hits the vanguard, sure. Yeah. He then can choose not to use 
here TikTok worker's skill, because obviously he wants the crit to give him the soul rather than be time leaked. Yep. Then when he uses the history maker, it's going to, he's going to have to either have to time leap away the TikTok TikTok tick away, which is bad, because obviously tick away is a very strong card. Yep. Or he's going to have to not get the extra attack. Exactly. So he just goes straight for it, time leaps the TikTok worker, very interesting. Fetches mm -hmm. the melon, which is fine. Because now we can go from the melon into the Erwata, history maker the Erwata, still get the plus and then still have this TikTok the next turn for the soul if he needs it. Yeah, so now we can see Jay did get the critical trigger in the damage zone, and now he's getting the Dran from his Melum, and now he's going to use the History Maker to time leap the Dran to get himself another attacker, which is going to be the Jet G. So we do still have that one critical trigger in the bind zone that he did time leap. So he time leaped that and then he used the uh, TikTok to yeah. fetch out the other Which means that, that crit is not coming back either because the time leap target isn't there anymore. Yeah, unless he uses Huang Long, then he could get it back. Yeah. But that's pretty much the only way he's going to be able to get that back. So he also has the Melum uh, going for the boost this time. So mm. not on the offensive. And let's see, he's just, they're just shuffling decks and whatnot. And now let's see if he's going to attack with a Sabrice first, or... Yeah, it would make sense, but first he has to take the damage. And now it's going to be the... No trigger, no trigger, but... It's really unfortunate. Yeah, because that could have also once again ended the game there. Jay does, he takes the risks, but he knows... Just like he took the risk in game 2 and it didn't work out, but he also took the same risk in game 1. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, he, he knew that it wouldn't happen, but... So we see JG yeah. assisting here, which is why he didn't go for the Sabrina's play earlier. Yeah, exactly. That's why he didn't guard very much as well, because he needs to have his cards to G assist exactly. away. Exactly, so he will be behind now quite sorely, because not only did Eve take the first stride, but he's also, you know, he's G just assisting. ahead in all forms, while uh, Jay is just being put further behind. He has to uh, drop the heal, which definitely is going to hurt his defenses quite badly. Yeah, but mm. it has to be done because the rest of his hand is all combo pieces and a perfect guard that hand. He needs those to really get back into the game with. Exactly. So he's dropping the Metallica Phoenix and the Sabreeze. So Sabreeze obviously won't be used anymore in the game, so that makes sense. And now he's also going to stride. And let's see which one he's going to choose. And still, there's a bit of a joke here because obviously, oh, why did you pick up your deck to stride? But he's obviously going to time leap anyway, so it doesn't yeah, matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's dropping the Uwatar which will be the target for his Jet G. And there we have the Huang Long. Yep. So, yeah. The thing is, that's already, yeah, that's already setting up for his future plays. Uh, he still does have the Lishma that he can use now, as he does have Soul available. But, yeah. The only issue is now finding a booster for the History Maker that he's going to find off of the Lishma. Yeah. So, let's see what he draws from these two cards. We see a Jet G and a Heal, I believe. So now he has to choose one to put back, and I don't think we'll be able to see it. No, we do not. So, both players, well, Eve has like seven cards in hand, I think. Yeah, uh, he'll display them now. There's three and six. no, six. Okay. That's cool. still quite a lot. Yeah, and he is on three damage, so you can afford to take at least Especially one or two with attacks. Jay being able to put up not much of a good defense on him. Exactly. So now he's got one or two cards left, and let's see. Eve is considering taking this attack, he's just an 11k. He needs the damage as well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. But it might be more worth to take the next rearguard attack. He but no, he takes the and gets the draw. That is pretty big. Uh, because now, yeah, he's gonna be able to time leap. Nope, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna TikTok. take the TikTok to fix that play. Uh, we weren't too strict on, you know, letting players take back stuff. So if they make a small mistake, like it's perfectly fine. So what he can do now is he time leaps the Malam with the TikTok. So this is one of the really strong things about Chrono Dranji. Even if he can now get the History Maker with it, and even the History Maker won't normally hit, he can then use Chrono Dranji to find a ZTB, which now makes it a 14k, which gets a little bit closer. Yeah. That way he doesn't have to rely on a trigger, because obviously he uses Chrono Jet G as 16k with the draw trigger defensively. Yeah. So he would have had needed two triggers on the History Maker to be able to hit there. Now he only needs one. So he gives him an extra boost, gives him a bit of soul, and it's also potentially a bit of deck thing if you wanted to find a Chrono Dragon. Exactly. And so he goes like, for an unboosted History Maker just to time leap his Awata. Yeah, I think that's puts, fine. He puts his uh, Uwatar into the removed, yeah. from, <laughs> removed from play zone. Uh, but yeah, now he fixes okay. that. But so he does this because obviously it's not going to hit on its own. And he wants to be able to either risk hitting the stand with his Huang Long. 
Or because he knows he's got another attack coming in from the time leap of the History Maker, he can then go for the att attack again somewhere else. Yeah, and just to talk about the Dranji, this is something that we haven't seen much of in the West just yet. It's picking up traction in Japan now because of the new set, which brings out a lot more new ZTBs, as well as making ZTB pretty much a playable deck on its own. So it, there's already a few targets that you can go for that enable more plays and essentially give you more kind of toolboxing to work with, which makes the Dranji a bit more flexible in a way. So it's so far from all the European players that I've seen, Jay is the only one that was willing to try out the Dranji, and I think that's very like it's very interesting that he he's been trying it out for a couple of weeks and now he decided to take it to the tournament and you can see that it actually worked off because he made it all the way to the finals. So it's definitely an interesting starter choice and as we can see it is also working out. So he used perfect guards the Hein Long. And again, no trigger for Jay, which is really unfortunate. Yeah, but it does get the perfect guard, so at least defensively that's something positive. But yep. yeah, we'll see. And now the Huang Wang is gonna target just, uh, well, yeah, it's gonna target he's gonna the He's gonna leash Mar first, I think. Yeah, he's gonna leash Mar first, use the Delay Blazer, and he's just putting the uh, Tiger G over there face down because he will be calling it. So, so the yeah. way that stacks, in case you are unsure about what exactly just happened there, he time leaps with leash Mar into Delay Blazer, puts the Delayed Blazer trigger ability in resolution state, but hasn't actually resolved it yet, but resolves the tick away first to put the Kron the Tiger G from the drop zone to the bottom of the deck, and then time leaps the History Maker into the Tiger that he fetched for earlier. Yeah, so we can see it definitely shows Jay's experience with the time leap deck, and it's very fascinating to see it being played. And as we can see, that earlier uh, draw trigger that was called from the Gen G is now Coming in with full effect, it's going to be, you know, at least a 16k attack. That would have been just the 14k with the History Maker. So definitely which is now exactly going to hit the Chrono Jet G. Which exactly, is really so it's really paying off. And now he's using the Huang Mang to counter blast one and take the Melon back from the Bind Zone. And all the other cards will just return back onto the field. And I believe Melon is the only one that was actually lost in time. Yes. So, now he's got two 16k attacks, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, correct. No, 18, because yes. Delay Blazer gets plus 2k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or 2k. But that's still a pretty good offense here, and he's still got like five cards in hand from his attacks. Yeah, so it's definitely he'll not. He'll be able to draw bad. one more when the Lishma comes back. Yeah, that's also true, and then he'll still have two counter to work with, mm -hmm. so it's definitely quite alright. He is able to, despite the GSS, bounce back into the game and still try to take it all, but we'll see how it works out. So there's still this final attack that Eve has to think about. He's got still five or six cards in hand. Five. Yeah, that is five. But we know so. one of them is a PG. Yeah. So I don't think. Oh, he's the PG on his final one. Ah, that's true. That's true. So he still has two small attacks. He can intercept for one of them, uh, losing the history maker. But that is possible because you know he is on 16 from the draw trigger. But let's see what he decides to do here. He guards it. Yeah. Drops the 10. So a little bit too much, but it might be the case that he doesn't have any fives left in hand, or maybe ones I think that he, he was doesn't. attacking the history maker. Ah, that is also possible. So he drops his one and only Calaboom. So unless that gets recycled, it won't be coming back. Mm -hmm. And now just undoing his time leaps and calling out all the units from that. And now the Leash Mark comes through and he can Cow Blast one to draw an additional card, which will definitely help him in the defensive stages of this game. Yeah. So. Especially now because um, obviously Yves got the first try, so it's probably going to be the next stage now. It's going to be a lot of pressure. Because the great thing about next stage is that you don't need to combo with the next stage for it to be threatening. Yeah. Especially in this position where he doesn't have a lot of cards left because he defended a lot of attacks last turn. So his combos are very minimal. You see that he's got he's, he's got the Melon History Maker, but he doesn't have his Lishma. Uh, he's lost his Gear Cat. He needs to be able to somehow either find his Erwata, or he needs to get the Erwata off of the Melon, and yeah. which then denies him an extra attack because he can't you know, can't get the Blade Blazer, can't go for a Tiger G or anything like this. Yeah, that's true. He also, I believe he only runs one Tiger G and we saw it go to the damage zone at the very first damage check of the game. Yeah, which means that he doesn't have much way in the f terms of fuel control either. Yeah. Because obviously there's no... He could Calaboom the sheep, but it wouldn't really do make a difference here. Yeah, but now he's also lost his one and only Calaboom, so it's pretty much exactly. all the control that he had in the deck is now gone in this stage of the game. Which is why he needs to play this offensive line and get, yeah. reclaim the advantage. Yeah, and it makes sense because Jay 
did lose a couple of hand cards from the G assist. Which a heal trigger being yeah, a major one. That's a very big one. And he is on 5 as well. He did get the draw from the leash mob, but in the end, you know, when you're on 5 damage, you can't afford to take anything without gambling on that heal. And I'm not sure how many heals he even has left, because I think he might just have 1 and maybe 2. You I saw no, one he, being he vanilla. He hard guarded 1, yeah. yeah he hard guarded so with 1 of them. he's got 2 left. Yeah. No, he has 1 left. He has 1, hand, one, one in hand. hand. One uh, removed from game, so just one possibly left in the deck. And there's the one we see from hand coming out for a G guard. Yep, and that's going to be the hetero. Yep. But hitting the history maker is definitely the right choice because you limit the number of attacks Yves can do really badly. Yeah. This yeah, is yeah. down to three, unless he hits another history maker or a Mello. Yeah, if he does top deck one of those, that is going to essentially just cancel out the hetero round, but let's see what he gets. So that was a hetero round dropping for the Melum. You know, a bit of an overguard, but he gets the crit, which is also not that bad. It's one of the better options there. I mean, he loses the boost on the Steam Breath, so it's a bit of extra 5k shield. The hit, it would have been guarded by Hetero anyway, so here we see here he gets another TikTok. Because he knows that he can't combo any further, so at this point he's just cutting his losses, plussing off the next stage, forcing the pressure, and just making it so that Jay can't fight back. Yeah, and in the end he still has an 11k attack, so that'll eat up at least one 5k shield from Jay's side and as well as these two very strong Vanguard attacks, which will be, you know, afterwards the Jet G is going to be also boosting up uh, himself. 21. So it's going to be quite scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, there is the Tiger. He's got so no... He put it back with the tick away. Okay, so I guess he did heal it. Yeah, but okay. no, no triggers, unfortunately. Yeah. So he resolves the next stage. So we already have a Sabreeze in the face up, but he doesn't have a G guard this time, so it's only plus 5k on the Chrono Jet G. So it's only 16. But yeah. we'll go up to 26 with the two TikToks. Yeah, exactly. So he drops his drive check, I believe. Uh, mm -hmm. Now he's going to go for the 11k attack. And so Jay has, I think, four or three cards left in hand. So he's going to have to... I think it's three. Yeah, I think it's three. So he's going to probably intercept this one. He's checking. It's time to check for the last heal. So none in the damage zone. There should be one in the drop zone. Or two now, two rather. Two in the drop zone, one removed. From one me. removed. And so... He's just got to bank on it because I... Hmm. He's going to intercept with this one, and now it's yeah. going to be a 26 from these two crits. In the end, that crit that he got from the hitter round is going to pretty much, you know, make it or break it. Ain't no guards, and let's see if he gets the last heal. Nope, he it's doesn't. the perfect guard. And so Eve takes the final game and thus wins the DFUC in a very close matchup. We can see Jay's hand as well is just three 5k shields. So that was a very interesting set of games between two Time Leap players, and so they showed off what the deck can do, and especially what the knowledge of the deck can do in this mirror match. Yeah, especially because they know what their deck does, so they know what the opponent... You know, Jay knows that Eves wants to find his combo, Eves knows that Jay needs to defend in like plus cards in hand, yeah. so they can respond appropriately by knowing what to attack. Yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed this set of commentated games, and for once also thank you to Zai for co-commentating with me, so it's interesting to get other uh, input on the game that I might not be able to provide as well, so I hope you guys enjoyed that as well. So that's going to be it for us, and I hope you guys enjoyed the set of three games, and I'll see you guys next time, bye bye!